everyone, my name is Ronan. I work here at the Colony Public Library and I'm kind of the resident science enthusiast. And today we're gonna to continue our lesson on chemistry. So I hope you watched our other video about physical change and other stuff about chemistry. We're gonna continue that and learn about chemical change today. In case you didn't watch it, let's do a quick review. So we're talking about chemistry. What is chemistry again? Chemistry is the study of matter. And what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass or takes up space. And there's also the states of matter, like solid, liquid, and a gas. And we're gonna talk about another type of, chem of, of change today that we can change matter, but we also talked about physical change. That's when the molecules of matter move around and change states of matter or change location, they float, they sink, they change temperature, things like that. But we can easily change it back to what it was before. That's what physical change is, when you can easily change it back. A chemical change, which is what we're gonna do today, is when we start off with one material and we end up with a different material. And we can't easily change it back to what that starting material was. So if I have an example of paper and I take a, a, some fire and I burn that paper, what does that paper turn into? It turns into ash, right? It has a big explosion sometimes, it turns into ash. And then can I push that ash together and make it back into paper? Nope, it's still ash, it can't turn back into paper. So it's not easily reversible and it turned into a new substance. So that's a chemical change, and we're gonna do an experiment with that today. Are you excited? I'm really excited, so let's get started. All right, so for this experiment, you'll need a plastic water bottle or any other kind of uh, used bottle, a funnel, a balloon, some baking soda, some vinegar, and measuring spoons so we can measure out our ingredients. Do you have all those? It's okay if you don't right now. We're gonna do this experiment, and you can try it at home when you have these ingredients. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need to put the balloon over the funnel like this. We're gonna put our baking soda inside the balloon. So we need to measure out um, a third of a cup of baking soda. So I'm gonna find my one third cup measuring spoon. So that's one over three, if you're looking at it at home. One over three cups. So let's measure out our baking soda. Have you guys cooked at home with your parents or your siblings? And, or baked at home, do you know what you do when you measure out dry ingredients? You wanna make sure that it's not a mound on top, oops, I'm spilling everywhere, but that it's an even layer of the ingredient because that makes sure that we have the right amount and I'm just spilling baking soda all over this table. So let's use a knife or a finger to kind of round out the top and spill everywhere. Maybe it's probably nicer when you do it at home. All right, that's probably good enough. And let's pour that inside the funnel. Make sure it all goes down in there because right now it's just kind of stuck on top. So you can kind of shake it around. Make sure that one third cup of baking soda goes into the balloon. This is actually quite a bit of baking soda. All right, now let's take the balloon off the funnel. Woo, that might be too much. And set it aside for now. We don't really need the balloon just yet. Now let's put that same funnel in the bottle like this, because now we're going to measure out one cup of vinegar. Is this one cup? So I'm gonna be very careful not to spill everywhere, which I did with the baking soda. Let's pour one cup in the cup measure and then pour it in the funnel so it goes into the bottle. Perfect, all right. Okay, now we can take the funnel out. We don't need that anymore and just set it aside. All right, what we're gonna do with our balloon is we're going to very carefully put it over the top of the bottle, but we don't wanna make a mixture yet. So I'm just gonna very carefully put the lid of the balloon, whoops, like that, so that the balloon kind of stays to the side. And I'm gonna hold the side here so that nothing comes out or doesn't fall off. All right, so we're about ready to do our experiment, but first, we need to make a hypothesis, right? Do you remember from our last video what a hypothesis is? It's a scientific guess or an educated guess. So let's make a guess really quick. You can either keep it in your head, you can tell someone else that's with you, or you can write it down. What will happen when we mix the baking soda and vinegar together? So what do you think will happen? Will it explode? Will nothing happen? Will something happen? Let's think really hard and think about what will happen. All right, do you have a hypothesis? All right, so now it's time to test our hypothesis and we're going to mix these two things together. Are you ready? On the count of three, let's lift our balloon 
and mix the baking soda and vinegar together. Three, two, one, lift. Get all that baking soda in. Be sure you're also holding the balloon onto the bottle. Woo! Woo! Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh, what is happening? There's a lot of stuff going on. Woo! Okay. So we kind of did our experiment and made our observations at the same time because it all happened really fast. Do you remember what an observation is? So an observation is when we use our senses to get a sense of what is happening in the world around us. So let's observe what happened with our experiment. So it all kind of happened really fast. So what happened was we mixed the things together. There was a big reaction happening in the bottle. Stuff filled up in the balloon. The balloon filled up with something and it's still filled up with something. That is really, that was really exciting. Uh, so what is the balloon filled with? First of all, before we figure out the exact substance, what state of matter is the balloon filled with? It's filled with a gas. So we started off with a solid in the balloon, that baking soda, and a liquid in our bottle. But now we have a gas in our balloon. Do you know specifically what kind of gas? So let's breathe in and breathe out. Do you know what that gas is that we breathe out? That is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is what we exhale, and that is actually the same gas that's in the balloon right now. So when baking soda and vinegar react, it creates carbon dioxide. I also want you to try something else. We're gonna observe something else with our sense of touch. I want you to feel the bottom of the, bo of the bottle where all of this reactions happen. What does it feel like? It feels cold. That's really weird, right? Because we didn't put it in the fridge, we didn't add a, a cold thing because our vinegar was room temperature, but it got colder than it started off with. So that's a really interesting thing that happened with our experiment. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So we observed a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of exciting things, and let's talk about what happened. All right, so that was a really fun, exciting experiment. And that was a really good example of a chemical change. Do you remember why? So our chemical change uh, is when we start off with one substance, one material, and we end up with a different material, and we can't easily change it back to what it was. So what did we start off with? We started off with baking soda and vinegar, our two ingredients here, and we ended up with carbon dioxide, if you remember, that gas in this balloon. And we don't have baking soda and vinegar in here. It's all kind of reacted and turned into this like mixture of liquid and there's water in there and all kinds of stuff is also carbon dioxide. So it's all kind of mixed together and it's no longer baking soda and vinegar. We've created a new thing. We created carbon dioxide. That's really exciting. And it's also another example of a chemical reaction because if you remember, the bottle feels cold, right? That reaction made a cold uh, change in temperature. So that's a really exciting example of a chemical change. It's something called an endothermic reaction. Can you say that with me? Endothermic, so E-E-N, kind of like inside. So what happened was the heat is absorbed. It goes inside, endothermic. So the heat goes away, goes inside, and we're left feeling cold on the outside. So the heat is absorbed, it goes inside, and it's an endothermic change. So a lot of times in chemical reactions, we get a temperature change. So in this case, we got an endothermic, a cold heat absorption reaction. So this was a really exciting uh, experiment. I hope you had a lot of fun doing this at home, because I certainly did. That was really exciting. We're gonna do another cool experiment in our next video, so I hope you come back for those for that. And I hope you had fun doing this. Maybe you wrote down some observations and your hypothesis and kind of made it more um, sciencey. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.